ইস্যুজ <coughs> Kidney disease improving global outcome guideline regarding the dialysis in ICU. We all know there are three modalities. That is intermittent hemodialysis, chronic continuous renal replacement therapy, and the in between a hybrid of that is SLED. I will not discuss in details of this. We all know how these trials act. The intermittent is rapid, short, but very effective. but requires a hemodynamic stability the crrt is a very prolonged process of more than 24 hours is slow and continuous it maintains the hemodynamic stability but requires lots of things to adjust in between and in ma ma many situations the nephrologist has invented a sequence in between of this of 18 and 16 hours not that much slow not that much fast is that a slow sustained or slow low efficiency dialysis that all we know there are definite uh, advantages because it is slow progressive it is more hemodynamic stability but important thing is that it removes the fluid from the um, intravascular space as well as from the interstitial space so that's why it has been claimed that the microcirculation uh, is better and the patient's improvement is better because of the the group who promotes crrt but there are a lot of drawbacks also like hemocoagulation problem like increased the oxygen demand and then reduction of the cardiac contractility loss of energy loss of uh, protein and other amino acids and requires a very high expertise and a very very high cost which is very difficult in our setting um, we have started crrt in cms thak but on in contrast the intermittent hemolysis is, is a very powerful one and so <clears throat> we all those these indications of a replacement therapy but more importantly whenever the potassium rises rapidly every day it rises more than one whenever we cannot explain the encephalopathy in set in the context of aki but more so in the icu the many of the patients requires fluid overload in heart failure patients and many of situations have bleeding disorder but the platelet count is normal many a time we find intestinal congestions bloating there is intestinal failure and obviously few intoxication and alcohol so in these situations we should consider dialysis in icu but when to start is it early is it late many of our nephrologist start dialysis very early and many of us like me want to start a late this cochrane library in 2018 has addressed this issue of when to start it shows a certain benefit for the early initiation of renal replacement in icu patients but subsequent meta analysis and stratified analysis found that this specific group belongs to the post operative patients only the start aki study that is standard versus accelerated initiation of renal replacement therapy in aki they included 3019 critically ill patients and randomly assigned early and delayed strategy in the early strategy 97% has been given dialysis while 62% of the late st strategy they got dialysis and surprisingly there was no difference in the mortality at the 90 days and you will be surprised also that patients assigned to the early strategy were more likely to remain dialysis dependent and at 90 days this kidney replacement therapy that is dialysis in acute kidney injury in adults indications timing and dialysis this is an up to date recommendations this up to date platform there is meta analysis of 1879 patients they studied the same thing earlier late 
they found that it did not decrease mortality at 28 days, ekmash, dumash, kimba tin masho. There is no change in the mortality even early and late and uh, delayed start of the re replacement therapy. So first take home message is there is no benefit to start the RRT in the early early st strategy basis. So if we do not, if we start uh, early or late, which one we should start? Either is intermittent or continu uh, um, um, continuous or a sustained low efficiency. Let's see. The Cochrane Library uh, review in 2007 reviewed 15 randomized con control trials. And here also the authors conclude that neither of the two techniques, uh, inter in intermittent or CRT, is superior to other in risk of, they have not effect in the mortality in ICU, length of hospital stay, recovery from renal function in the cardiovascular stability like hypotension, then dose of ionotropic drugs or risk of bleeding. It may appear that the Cochrane uh, review was done in 2007. So many of the nephrologists debated that subsequent, there are a lot of improvement in the um, ICU um, um, management. So Professor Schoenfelder in 2017, he reviewed the subsequent metal uh, randomized control trials in 2017. And the new meta-analysis Reach the same conclusion, there is no difference between the early and delayed onset of renal replacement therapy. This hemodiaf study, in this prospective Baldessander French study, 360 patients with AKI and multi organ dysfunction syndrome were randomly assigned to intermittent or continuous hemofiltration. The primary endpoint was survival of uh, 60 days. At 60 days, survival was the same in the, both, the, both the groups. And the side effects also in the same in the both the groups. The high volume in intensive care, that is ivory study in 2013 and rescue in 2017, do not resolve the uncertainty and conclude that not even a very high flux can improve the renal function. And the rescue study revealed that Favorable results are not found in the AK subgroups. Favorable results are only found in the patients who are suffering burn with sepsis. So this two study reveal that yes, an early strategy can be helpful in the burn patients only. So with this, the, what is the optimal model, modality of renal replacement? The data do not support the superiority of any particular type of RRT in patients with AKI. In majority of the patients, selection of the modality should therefore be based upon the local expertise and availability of staff and equipment. That is, we do, do we have CRT? Though if there is no CRT question, so does not arise of CRT. Choice of RRT should be individualized. As an example, in patients with acute burn injury, fulminant hepatic failure, Continuous therapy may be a good option to choice. However, the costs, logistic and train, train staffs, and particular diagnosis, that is whether the patient is having liver failure or not, may be a greater factor in choosing the modalities of renal replacement. So what is the next take-home message? So there is no difference in the outcome in the AKI patients who are critically in any particular type of RRT. So we even with that take home message, does CRT is uh, be helpful for any specific subgroup? Yes. A few specific subgroup of critically ill patients may be benefited with CRT. Those who are post operative patients has done, say after cardiac surgery, patient have long uh, prolong of hypotension and something or some drug effect. The burn with sepsis, acute fulminant liver failure, and brain injury with elevated intracranial pressure. These are the group of patients may be benefited with CRRT if you do have the expertise. 
So the fifth Paris International Conference has summarized the modalities of the three group of treatments, whether it's CRT, SLADE, and ISD. Here, all the details of the different modalities has been given. So it is 24 hours per day. So if it is 24 hours per day and we go give every day, so it becomes a very prolonged process for days or weeks. Slate six to twelve hours, as you know, and uh, intermittent is four hours. The blood flow they maintain is hundred to two hundred in CRT, but we do have sometimes given blood flow of fifty even if the blood pressure and the patient is in shock. The in slate the blood flow was hundred to two hundred. Now with the present machines we can give here also a blood flow of fifty ml per minute. And the definitely the traditional dialysis is 250 to 350. And the dialysis flow is also here. So that is the way they have the randomized controls trial has been summarized here. <clears throat> this is the Etienne, Etienne uh, study. Extended daily dialysis versus continuous. This is the extended daily dialysis, EDD versus continuous renal replacement CRRT, a, that is therapy for acute kidney injury, a meta-analysis. From 2000 to 2014, seven randomized control and 10 observation studies has been studied where 55, 33 and 670 are given respectively in the seven and 10 observation studies. This meta-analysis, show no difference in mortality between extended or CRT. But a mild trend toward the improved survival is in favor of the SLED treated uh, in, in patients with AKI. So why SLED? The SLED might lead to more rapid immobilization current <clears throat> When we CRT, we have to bound for the machine for the day and day. We have to wait for the patient to do the investigation and procedure. Second, it is short and flexible. So, bleeding and hypotension is easy to manage. Third, it is not easy to manage. So, our message is SLED has some advantages to consider if you have the modalities of treatment in your hand. So let's see this, uh, after the this backgrounds, <clears throat> renal replacement uh, therapy in ICU should be intensive or less intensive. The, should we give a very high volume or we go for a generous renal replacement therapy? This 18 study has studied as a multi-center randomized trial critical patients with one or more additional organ failure or sepsis. The patients were randomized in two groups, intensive and less intensive dialysis therapy. Hemodialysis are stable. They were given either intermittent dialysis or hemodialysis are unstable, CRT or slate. Uh, this is the stable In intensive group, they received in the previous slide, jara less intensive, tadir ko amra intermittent dialysis dao hoise, tadir ko CRT dao hoise, tadir ko slit dao hoise, but air magnitude ta kom dao hoise, I am coming to that. In the intensive group, the dialysis slid or given in the KTV of 1.2 to 1.4, that is 6 days per week. But in the less intensive group, it is given three days per week. So intensive means the dialysis or CRT six days and less intensive for three days. In every session, they have attained the dialysis adequacy with 1.2 or 1.4. And the CRT they have delivered in the intensive group, effluent rate was 35 ml per kg per, per hour. And in the less intensive is 22 ml per kg per hour. Now, now the outcome is the rate of death at 60 days was 53% in the intensive group 
and 51.5 percent in less intensive group. Recovery of renal function and rate of non-renal organ failure are also similar in both groups. Of note, more episodes of hypotension and hypophosphatemia and hypokalemia occur in the intensive group. So this graph clearly shows the intensive group outcome and the less intensive group, which is very negligible difference. So this Etienne's, Etienne study conclude that this this increasing the small solute clearance or renal dialysis in critical in patients with AKI over current adequate dialysis dosing schedule had no effect on clinical outcome in this disease process. The Ivory study, as I have mentioned in the past, <clears throat> they also found that there is no difference in the 28 or 90 day mortality between the two groups of intensive and less intensive group. Professor Van Wert assessed 12 studies of almost 4,000 patients, including seven studies of CRRT, three of uh, uh, dialysis, and one of SLED. These investigators found no benefit of more intensive RRT than the usual dialysis pattern. So there are one another study of handout, this Hanover dialysis outcome study compared extended duration dialysis ADD provided for approximately eight hours per day. They have a study normally eight hours twice weekly, they have eight hours eight, three thrice weekly. Then no difference in the survival or recovery of kidney function as observed with the more intensive treatment. Besides this, several other studies also explored these similar things, whether intense or less intense. And Cochrane Library in 2016 also summarized that none of these controlled clinical trials included could be demonstrated that higher effluent flow doses produce significant benefits in 30 day mortality or length of hospital stay. So, why there is no improvement? The first, the intensity <clears throat> intensive therapy is reported to be associated with electrolyte disturbance such as hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia, which may affect the renal, cellular, or respiratory outcome. Second, this intensive therapy also lost, lost uh, more loss of amniosis and protein losses and many micronutrients. Third, this is very important in our IC settings. Many antibiotics can be cleared by renal replacement therapy. And this antibiotic, if is lost in the, the dialysis, so the patients of sepsis will require very, very high dose. We, we, don't, we do not know how much we have to give, but the patients will suffer of low antibiotic level. And as a such, the outcome will be definitely low because of the poor, outcome, poor um, the low um, <clears throat> MIC of the antibiotics. So all these factors leads us to the Kedigo recommendations that normal dose of CRT should be the range of not 35, it is 20 to 25 ml per kg per hour. And the in, in intermediate hemodialysis, the SLED is chosen as the RT modality for AKI and they should set the delivery of KTV by KTV of 3.9 per week, that is 1.3 per session. So thrice weekly and KTV should be targeted to 1.3, total 3.9 per week. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's come up that the, it should not be early, it should not be intensive. And in certain situations, we should consider RRT, rest we should go for SLED. I hope the <clears throat> message that I wanted to share is clear to all. Now the dose is, what should be the dose in every particular patient? <clears throat> the dose depends of RRT, it should be based on the fall, this followings. As we should, whenever you go to any patients in ICU, we should consider these things. What is the volume level? When should we start the intervention? What is the acid-based level of this patient? What are the level of potassium? What is the level of sodium? And whether the patients require any nutritional adjustment during the dialysis? 
Say the patient is very fluid overloaded. We cannot give fluid and nutrition through nasogastric tube or that. Then we can give some nutrition during the dialysis. And if the patient is hemodynamic stable, we can remove the fluid during the dialysis. Like we can give the um, fatty acid preparations. We can give the nutrient like avipen and others. <clears throat> But so far, there is no randomized control trial which has evaluated the dose of dialysis in any particular patients. <clears throat> These two studies, that is Renal and Finaki, has shown that the more the fluid level, positive fluid level shows more uh, mortality. So this fluid level should be the most important thing to decide the dose of dialysis in any particular patients in, in, a, <clears throat> in critical care unit. <clears throat> so to, uh, to control the, to assess the desired volume level, the mode of view dialysis that we choose, we have to adjust at time to time to consider the, whether this severe in severe volume load, or hypercatabolic, or acidosis, or hyperkalemia. That's as that was as discussed in the previous slide. So <clears throat> this slide summarizes that after a definite point of um, dose of dialysis, there is no benefit of improving, uh, increasing the dose of dialysis. So. We can increase a particular point, so that has been recommended by the KDGO. Thereafter, further increasing in the dose of dialysis will not give a good result in any particular patients. With considering all these things, you know the up-to-date... So, Amra Chilam, Amra up-to-date Chilam, Taina? Yes, sir. Can you start with Amra? The up to date platform, which is a, um, um, in fact, which is the most dependable um, authority for all of us, they recommend thrice weekly with a KTV of 1.2, more than 1.2. Kintu Jodi, Amadir Kunokaroni, Amadir Achievement and Nashi, Amadir KTV, Komthake, Tahali, in that situation, we should increase the dose of dialysis or frequency of dialysis. In case of CRRT, up to the recommendation is that we should have a fluent uh, rate of more than 20 ml per kg per hour. Kindu Jodi Amadir Sheta improvement Nahoi, Bamad desired improvement Nahoi, then we can go up to 25 ml per kg per hour in CRRT. So, take home as message of this paragraph there is no convincing evidence supporting the view that more intensive RRT can improve outcome of AKI or septic AKI. At present, 20 to 25 ml per kg per hour of effluent flow rate is recommended for CRD practice. And KDV remains the common available method of monitoring solute removal in um, hemodialysis and SLED. And that you know, that is 3.9 per week. So take home message for the dose. Dose of RRT should be individualized, whether it is a post aortic patient, whether it is a liver patient, whether it is internal brain injury or a simple sepsis. Then what should be his volume status? What should be his, the, uh, her, his or her um, electrode imbalance? So bedside assessment of the fluid status after every dialysis so that we can set whether the next dialysis is scheduled tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So level of azetomy, as I said, the potassium and other electrolytes. What should be the cardiac status? If the patient cannot load uh, dialysis, whether it is um, slayed or it, uh, intermittent, we should choose CRT if it is possible. And if the patient can take, uh, heart can take the load of dialysis, then we should suggest intermittent dialysis because that is easy to manage and the staffs are more trained on that. So whether this patient's hepatic, acidotic, post aortic or burn, in that case, we should have been intense, intensive and CRT therapy for this particular group of patients. So and then when we should complete the dialysis or how long we'll give dialysis? Here, the most important guide is the adequate start development of or return of the adequate diuresis. 
because normalized from the biochemistry parameters will take a more time to come back. Here, who, those patients who, uh, who are on CRRT, before going to internment hemodialysis, there is a ta there is a option we can have extended daily dialysis or extended hemodialysis before going from CRRT to I intermediate hemodialysis for a few days we can go extended hemodialysis or extended daily dialysis for eight hours or so um, for few days. A transition to patient ke adjustment er jono shubida hoy, staff the adjustment er shubida hoy, ebang treatment subsequent baki je associated treatment gulo shigulo dite shahajjo kore. So, taking homoses of this paragraph, how long? So it's urine to decide when we'll start from CRT to do extended dialysis, then extended dialysis to intermediate dialysis, then we can stop to consider stop the patient's renal function recovers. So with this, my dear colleagues, my friends, my teachers, and my mentor, Professor Harun, who, uh, whom I want to follow, especially preparing these slides. In this age, he is also a lesson for us. I can make a lesson, uh, slides. I just completed my slide just two o'clock in the night. And this before the, before the procedure, I have, we have a, um, I mean, this practice for about 20 minutes. This does not happen to Professor Harun. His, his presentation is a milestone for all of us. So thank you, sir, for teaching all the way every time. So now, now I want to conclude. In our context in Bangladesh, no modalities of RRT is superior to other, but if available, SLED should be considered in AKI patients of ICU. There is no superiority in intensive renal replacement therapy. There is no proven benefit of early rep renal replacement except post-operative patients and burn patients. Dose of dialysis should not be high and should be individualized. An RRT should be drawn gradually and the urine output can be the best guide. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be happy if you have any que question for me. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. No money. For your nice, brilliant, excellent presentation. Actually, ask any topics to niche on the Ottonto Guru to topics. আমাদের কিডনি ফাউন্ডেশন আইসিইউ তে আমরা যে সমস্ত پیشنট ডিল করি আমরা প্রতিনিয়ত এই সমস্যাগুলি ফেস করে থাকি এবং আমার মনে হয় আমাদের এখানে আইসিইউ স্পেশালিস্ট আছেন আমাদের উপস্থিত উনি হয়তো একটু এই সম্বন্ধে অপিনিয়ন দিতে পারেন আমাদের অত্যন্ত প্রিয় শিক্ষক প্রফেসর হারুন স্যার এখানে উপস্থিত স্যার এখানে আমাদেরকে মেসেজ দিবেন তো তার আগে আমাদের এখানে যারা অনলাইনে আছেন বিভিন্ন দেশের বিভিন্ন জায়গা থেকে নেফ্রোলজিস্ট এখানে অংশগ্রহণ করেন যদি আপনাদের কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে আপনারা এখানে মাননীয় স্পিকার প্রফেসর মামুন হোসেন স্যারকে করতে পারেন আমাদের প্রফেসর হারুন স্যারকেও করতে পারেন আমাদের আইসিইউ স্পেশালিস্ট ডক্টর তাসনুবা করতে পারেন আশা করি সবাই ভালো অ্যানসার পাবেন তো প্লিজ কোশ্চেন প্লিজ হ্যাঁ আসসালামু আলাইকুম স্যার কে বলেন আগে পরিচয় দিবেন স্যার আমি ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ হাফিজ রহমান অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্ট প্রফেসর নেফ্রোলজি বিভাগ শেরে বাংলা মেডিকেল কলেজ Hey, happy. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Hamdulillah. Very nice to hear you. Bori shal theke bosh. This, hey, bolen. This sir. Sir, after lecture ta onik shundar hoye se. To amader to janar bisha jeta holo sir. Je amra slate, je je shop machine amra amader locally je amader machine ashe. Shei machine ki amra slide slate option gula korte parbo. With the permission of the professor Harun. In fact, nowadays, the shows the new generation machine glue assay, Sheta Bibron and Hook, but Fresina Sir Hook, Shoglati, Sled Auction Dawajai. So, it a machine glue to Kani check Kurini lay, but Spartak Asu de Kilimon, but if Tuminijo dekte paro, a Kani Auction glue assay. Most recent machine glue Shoglati Sled Dawajai. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Conventional the dialysis machine glue assay. She can alter filtration and rate. Dialysate fluid the flow, the rate code was a pasho ml per minute. So, a fluid rate take to change coin it a hobe, I'm the hundred ml coronita pari, our blood flow jetta, it a thomas on to actually the actual ponto shemel the taki, slate, ethodoc change code the hobe. No one is sound of commerce this one. I'm the conventional hemodialysis machine, I'm the slate code the pari. 
जी थैंक यू सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम तुल्ला थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर द एक्सीलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द रीनल रिप्लेसमेंट थेरेपी इन ए केई पेशेंट आई आई एम लिटिल बिट कंफ्यूज्ड अबाउट द पेशेंट हु हैज एक्यूट माइक्रोल इंफेक्शन एंड आल्सो देयर इज राइज ऑफ सिरप क्रिटिनिन इन दैट केस हाउ विल सेटल दिस प्रॉब्लम of renal replacement therapy particularly slate how long to be wet before giving dialysis or should we should we can start immediate dialysis in acute mi despite the high level of troponin <coughs> sir thank you very much amake shona jacche apnake amra shunte pacchi sir सर यार सम्बन्धे आपके अनेक धन्यवाद सर आनी सब चाहते एक गुरुतपूर्ण विषय सामने नहीं आसान हमार जूनियर यार सम्बन्धे शिशु भिजिट करते हैं एम स्पेशल हासपाल कथा से सर हमारे पार्सनल एक्सपिरियंस ये सर हम जे भाव एक आगे सर हमें पेशेंटर पालन रिडिमार्ट कत सीभियर एंड पेशेंटर एजोटेम कत सीभियर जदि तर ए के आर नर्माल इंडिकेशन थे पालमारिडिमा थे तेल सर हमें सब समय स्लेट दिखी एवं आलहमदुल्ला कखरा डायलिसिस रिलेटेड कमप्लीकेशन यब क्षेत्र पाए नहीं तो प्रथम दिखे दीते भय करत कि ना तो यह सिसिओते डायलिसिस मेशन व्यवस्था कर रेखे दो मेशन आ सिसिओते सिसिओते प्लान तैरिरा मेशन और शिफ्ट करते हैं पेशेंट शिफ्ट करते हैं ना सिसिओते डायलिसिस दे स्लेट दी फिफ्टी दिए शुरू करी ब्लाड फ्लो हंड्रेड पर्त तो हंड्रेडर का थी हंड्रेड टोटी हंड्रेड फिफ्टी करी कखो कख असुविधा है ना सर हमारे पार्सनल एक्सपिरियन्स को प्रब्लेम है ना सर उ आर गिविंग डायलिसिस इन एम आई पेशेंट्स नट ओनलि एम आई पेशेंट्स क्रनिक हार्ट फेलिओ जो इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन थार्टी पार्सेंट इवें टोटी एट पार्सेंट पेशेंट डायलिसिस दिखी सो देा जाए सर এটুকু আমার পার্সোনাল এক্সপেরিয়েন্স নট কোটিং ফর এনি এনি আদার রেফারেন্স স্যার थैंक यू वेरी मच স্যার थैंक यू মাই সেকেন্ড কোশ্চেন ইজ ওয়েন ইউ কনসিডার এ پیشنট উইথ ক্রনিক হিমোডায়ালাইসিস সাম অফ দি پیشنট ডেভেলপ অ্যাসাইটিস হিয়ার উই হ্যাভ সিন ইন आवर কিডনি ফাউন্ডেশন এন্ড ইন মেনি প্লেসেস দে ট্রাই টু রিমুভ দা অ্যাসাইটিক ফ্লুইড উইথ ক্যাথেটার and my suggestion that we should never remove the ascites fluid but if you continue the daily dialysis and remove the ultra filtration with high ultra filtration his ascites will be gradually improved what is your own idea sir 100% agree with you 100% if it is more than 100% that would be also true um, we should give daily dialysis according to money money as much as possible even after one week of dialysis what i do practice in ganeshastha because here lot of lot of patients with ascites and fluid um, inadequate dialysis are there because of their poor financial status so many a time we make the patient admitted give dialysis for one week every, every day dialysis in uh, as you said sir in uh, almost 90% cases all the um, uh, refractory ascites has been um, in fact overcome but even then as we have got a very huge number of patients there are very few patients which uh, there are residual mild to moderate ascites persist in that case we uh, uh, trap uh, we, we trap the dialysis for you know, the ascitic fluid for diagnostic purpose whether it is um, for any other reason other than the renal failure and it will be dealt accordingly thank you very much sir very important practical situation thank you for your answer আমাদের আসলে সময়ের স্বল্পতা আছে আমাদের একটা পনেরোর মধ্যে প্রোগ্রাম শেষ করতেই হবে তো এখানে যদি আর কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে করতে পারেন আর প্রশ্ন যদি না থাকে আমরা শেষ করবো আমি খুবই খুশি হয়েছি মানে অনেক পেশেন্ট প্রায় ফিফটি ফিফটি নেফ্রোলজিস্ট এখানে জয়েন করছে নিজে গ্রেট গ্রেট অ্যাচিভমেন্ট ফর দি কিডনি ফাউন্ডেশন আমি আসলে দাঁড়ায় থাকলে একটা হাততালি দিতাম কিডনি ফাউন্ডেশনে এত বড় একটা মানে বিখ্যাত মানে অত সাকসেসফুল অ্যারেঞ্জমেন্টের জন্য ইজ রিয়েলি গ্রেট থিং দ্যাট ইউ আর ডাইং স্যার হ্যাটস অফ ইউ এগেন Sakib sir thank you so much for your excellent presentation sir i just like to add a, a small about pd as i am expert in pd i am doing regular pd 
uh, in this kind of patient uh, that is critically ill patient, septic patient, hemodynamic unstable, cardiac unstable patient, uh, in this situation, uh, low resource country like Bangladesh and some remote places, not in Dhaka, uh, IPD intermittent peritoneal dialysis may be a good alternative. And you know, and, uh, uh, in the uh, some research, recent research, especially Africa, especially in AKI patient, especially for the pediatrics and old age patient, uh, they are equivalent result with CRRT and PD. So I think uh, PD may be a good alternative in this situation. Thank you so much. Sagib, I am with you. I am with you. I am with uh, most of the training is in India, the CMC, the Indian Army, the plus um, uh, AIMS. So, the Okhane is the resource constraint. Tara, many of the AKA patients they do peritoneal dialysis, um, IPD, of course. But I have seen few patients they have given um, um, in pediatric group. They have given flexible catheter, that is the venous catheter in the abdomen for days together to overcome the situations of um, AKI with a uh, dialysis, hemodialysis catheter in the peritoneal cavity. So there are two ways that they are. They do dialysis for three, four days with the same catheter. And as it, as it is flexible, the babies can be managed nicely. You are very correct. In many AKI patients, they, we can do peritoneal But of course, if the patient is in shock, then the efficacy of peritoneal dialysis will be restricted. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, our program is actually one of the best programs we have. Monday CME, our Kidney Foundation is a regular program. I mean, last minute, we have to get a little bit of 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 a little Journal presentation hoche, lecture hoche, bibino topics gulli ekhane niyomito hoche. To e topics gulli, e lecture gulli, amader kidney foundation er upload kora thake website e. Jodi karo dekhar icha hoy unara kidney foundation website dhuke e lecture gulli dekte paren. Aske saar je chomot ka lecture disi neta thakbe amader ekhane. To eta jodi bhobishte ke dekte chaan dekte paren. Facebook ke o thakbe. Saar ke ekto contribution korte koro kamo ekto saare kotha shunte jachi. Sir, you please conclude, Karan. My conclusion is that the, if we continue this CME for every institute or every medical college and also the private hospitals, I think the, uh, the strength of the medical education research and continued medical education will be upgraded and we all will be benefited. So I therefore request all of you to join the CME programs and the case reports and other update of information from the Kidney Foundation as well as give us opportunity to hear what you are doing and what we should be doing and what should be uh, the confusion remains in the medicine which always remain in future but upgrade of information is highly important for knowledge, behavior, and the treatment of the patient. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.